Grace and peace, Brother Sean here from the Zion Assembly of Jah. And as you know, we get all of our teachings and our doctrines from the Holy Scriptures, and we use the 1611 original King James Version. Make sure that you believe in the testimony of the Messiah and live in faith and obedience to the Most High's commandments of love to truly show the Most High that you are trying to get salvation. And we can do this by honoring just seven holy appointed scriptural feasts and the Sabbath day. In order to do this though, we have to know about the Most High scriptural calendar and of course his true clock. These are going to be things that are going to be setting us up to make sure that we meet with our appointments with the Most High on the true calendar. So you're going to learn of Jah's 12 month years and his sabbatical years and much more throughout this series. But today we're just going to be focusing mainly on a foundation. Our elder David Ray, who passed away in the year 2019, had written five books over the past 35 years regarding the Most High's calendar, his chronological time frames, prophecies, and many wonderful things. And these books are going to be expounded throughout our lessons and our videos as well. We'll be offering them as PDF documents in the future. Again, I want to give all praise to the Most High Jah and His Son Joshua the Messiah for giving us life and the opportunity to have eternal life. Be sure that you live up to the Most High's name in whichever way you've studied and researched it by keeping the Most High's commandments of love and, of course, keeping the testimony of the Messiah. Now this is the revelation of Jah's scriptural calendar, part one. And we're coming from the foundation of Jah, the original day and the blackness of darkness. We're going to learn how blackness of darkness is preeminent and is actually superior and that light came forth from the darkness regarding the Most High's calendar and his time frames. We're going to get a good understanding of the original day found within Genesis 1 verses 1 through 5. Now, this is a controversial and extensive topic with many subtopics, and I believe many people are doing their best to get to the truth, but there is a lot to deal with when it comes to this topic. And so it has to be broken down and kind of sliced up a little bit here, just to chew on this, because there's many things to get into, and if you just tackle everything at once, it'll become too confusing. So again, we're going to be focusing on the original day. Is it 12 hours or 24 hours? And when does it begin? This is a big issue. And this becomes a big issue, especially when you're talking about the Sabbath day, if it's 12 or 24 hours. Now, I'm not going to get a lot into the Sabbath day discussion today, but it does have a main play. And it's going to have a um, definitely a significance because we're going to be talking about the original day. And as far as I'm concerned, all seven days of the weekly cycle start and end the same way. But this uh, verse here in John chapter 11 verse 9 is the main verse that people bring out when it comes to this topic. And it reads, Joshua, Yahshua, Yahawashai, Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? So when we get into this topic, you can see, you're going to see how this verse here is going to be a foundation for many people. However, though, I think we can work through it. There are three general views of the definition of what's a scriptural day. We have the 12 hour day, which is the morning until the evening or 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or you can say sunrise until sunset. It's the daylight time. Then we can have the aspect of a 24 hour day beginning with the morning first and then the evening. And that would begin basically 6 a.m. in the morning till 6 a.m. in the morning or morning until morning or from sunrise to sunrise. Then also we have the 24 hour day that begins with the evening first and then the morning or the nighttime first and then the daylight second. And this is basically from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. Also evening to evening and many will also say sunset to sunset. So this is basically how it might look as a visual that this 12 hour day would be the, the day only and People who keep a 12-hour Sabbath would only observe the Sabbath day from the rising of the sun or in the morning until the evening. The night part, they believe, is not supposed to be honored as a Sabbath. And for various reasons, people say you rest anywhere in the nighttime. But again, I'm not going to be talking about the Sabbath that much, but it is the focus of this original day. 
So here we have our morning first and their night, night second. And then we have the evening first and the morning second. Now this is what I subscribe to and teach greatly. And I've researched it for many, many years. Over 28 years I've been researching this topic. I, I go back over it. I revisit it. I, I've seen all the debates about it. And I, I can say it's very conclusive to me that the evening was first and the morning. And I think one of the great foundations is right here as we speak about this on the creation, the first day of creation, Genesis chapter 1. So you can have 12 hours and 12 hours will give us a 24 hour day. This is how it might look in, in another form of a chart here, beginning from the evening and the morning. This here simply will be proved as being the original day and how days and dates should be. So. What we're going to get from this lesson and other ones, we're going to get a scriptural understanding of the word day in scriptural English and scriptural Hebrew. We're going to learn about the 12 hour night cycle and 12 hour light cycle. We're going to look at the 24 hour original day from Genesis chapter 1 and get an understanding of the words evening, morning, light, darkness, night and day in the scriptural context. And even ask the question, did the cycles of time begin with the darkness first or the light first? So all this information here is going to be revealed, but again, remember, we're going to be breaking it up, taking a little piece here, and in other videos, we'll break down different aspects and concepts of the calendar. So let's get right into it. The origination of the first scriptural day, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, in the beginning. And we're going to get a good read of this, go over every verse, and then come to an understanding. But before we do that, it's good to know that these, there's some important scriptural Hebrew words that are associated with this topic. On the left, you're going to have the so-called Hebrew translation, and on the right is the English. So we have Koshek for darkness, evening, Ereb, night is Layil, twilight is Neshef, Shabbat is Sabbath, light is Or, Yom, Yom is day, Yomam is daytime, day is and daily. Bokur equals morning and Makar equals morrow. Now when we get a, this, a, a good understanding of this the word day in English and in Hebrew, it can refer to several things and the context is the key. If somebody just says the word day only means this and that's it, they're going to be wrong because the day is used just how we use it in English in various ways. It can mean the sunlight period from sunrise to sundown. It can mean the 12 hour daylight period of work or the 24 hour original day of night and light. The 24 hour date period, for example, a bib 15 would be 24 hours long. All dates are 24 hours long, not 12. It can mean an unspecified or specific time or period. It can mean a prophetical year or a prophetical period of 1,000 years and go on and on. So again, just looking at the concept of what they can mean in English will give us a good understanding of this topic. When we look into the Hebrew, we have Yom H3117 and it translates as day, time, year, day as opposed to night, day, a 24 hour period, as defined by evening and morning in Genesis 1, as a division, so on and so forth. So as you can see, these are the various understandings of this word day. Now what's good to know is that this word day is actually translated twice as Yom and has two dif defini uh, different definitions. When we go to Strong's H3118, which is just right after H3117, we still have Yom or Yom. And it refers to, of course, a day. But notice the second definition, and this is very important. Day always refers to a 24-hour period when the word is modified by a definite or cardinal number. So in other words, anytime you see the word day with a number beside it, it's a 24-hour period. Or clearly, as we know, it should be a date. And the topic of a date you know, is something that I know a lot of calendar dissidents don't, you know, really bring up or focus on. A date is very important because it's 24 hours long. Also, if we go to Strong's H3119, we have Yomam, 
which means daytime, as you can see, or in the daylight, or daily, um, that way. And this is, again, H3119, all having the same root to Yom, Yomam. So the words Yom and Day, referring to a 24-hour period, is used in Scripture. And I want you to notice that the word Day, or Yom, in these verses below, are used to refer to both the 12-hour period and the 24-hour day. Esther 4.16 reads, Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. Now we don't have to read the rest of the verse, but that three days there, that word day, translates as Yom, and night or day, that day there, translates as Yom as well. And so we can see that the day, uh, the word Yom or day, can refer to a 24-hour period with the three days, or it can refer to the daylight period when it's contrasted with night. This should be easy to understand, but a lot of times when people don't read in context, they take it out of context and then they come to a misunderstanding. This word Yomam is used as the word day or daily or daytime, Psalm 78, 14, in the daytime. Also, he led them with a cloud and all the night with a light of fire. So again, the contrasting is Yomam, Psalms 13, 2. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? So again, H3119, your mom, dealing with daytime specifically. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, we read, And the life and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. So again, this word day here is your mom referring to the daylight period. But again, when you look through the scriptures, you'll find that yom by itself as well can only re will only refer to a daylight period or a 24-hour period. It all depends on the context. So let's look at the time cycles of creation, how they began with Jah. Now we know that time was originated by Jah, the Ancient of Days from the Beginning. In Daniel 7 we read, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. That's right, the Most High is eternal. So He's eternal, but when it comes to time, He is the beginning, and He is the end, Him and His Son. Time is manifested in His wisdom through cycles of time founded upon by the spiritual number seven. Now, I speak a lot about uh, the number seven in, in most of every calendar topic that we come up with, and I'm not going to go into it now, but you should know it's the number of wisdom and the number of completion and perfection and is utilized greatly with the Most High's calendar. So as we know, Jah is the beginning. And let's get a, a few scripture verses for this. Revelation 1. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith Jah, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Isaiah 44, Thus saith Jah, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, Jah of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no L. Revelation 1, 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first, and the last. So again, clearly we know that the Most High controls time. He's the first and the last. But we have to set that standard. Now the time period between Genesis 1 and 1 through 5 is the foundation of various cycles of time. And I want you to pay attention to these things because in day one, you're going to find these various understandings. It's the beginning of the true original calendar of timekeeping because the Most High was keeping time. He said the evening and the morning were the first day or day one. It's the first dark night and daylight cycle of 12 hours each. It's the first original day of the seven day weekly cycle or Sabbath cycles of time. It's the first day of the first month called a bib. It's the first day of the first season, which is spring or the latter rains. 
It's the first day of the 12 month yearly cycle. And it's the first day of this 7,000 year cycle of time. So as we can see, there's a lot of first days in the first day. It's very important. So let's continue and get into the read. Genesis 1. In the beginning, Elohim, God, Jah, Yah, created the heaven and the earth. Now I want to say right off the bat, this is not a blanket statement for creation. Because I know when a lot of people read this or even try to in interpret it, they say that this is just a blanket statement. But this is actually a focused point of time. It's the beginning. And it's the beginning when the Most High is creating. And the things that He's creating first is the heaven and the earth. And that's important for us to know. Because when we're talking about the beginning of time, you know, you just look at this word beginning, it, it's very powerful. The point in time at which a thing begins to bring into existence the source or first cause, the origin, to proceed to perform the first or earliest part of some action, to start to do something, to come into existence or being, to originate to originate or be the originator of. And many times you will hear us use the term originator for the Father. The word creator and originator are synonymous to us. And we could even sometimes call the creation His origination. These are the first things that are coming into existence. And again, this beginning is a moment in time. So right after the bat, He's creating. And we see that He's creating heaven and earth. Again, looking at this word, create itself, is H1254, which means bara, which means, again, to shape or to form, of regarding heaven or new conditions to be created of heaven and earth, right, of something new. Again, it, it says here, the, the second one says, it always has ja as subject. So my point here is that he's working right off the bat. Verse 1, he's creating and he's working. And this is what's happening all in the beginning. He's not relaxing, he's working. But what's good to note is that the Most High, he's working and creating in the blackness of darkness. Because the blackness of darkness is superior and it's preeminent. So let's take a look at Jah's blackness of darkness. A great foundation to understand is that the cycles of time began with the preeminence of the darkness first. Let's take a read. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. And this is found in Psalms 139. But the main emphasis is, you notice that the darkness and, uh, and the light are both alike to him. There's nothing different. He could see through the thickest darkness and he can see through the, the brightest light. He made them both. Now, I want to go on to read Isaiah chapter 45 as well. Verse 6, it reads, That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am Jah and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Jah, do all these things. Now my focus here, of course, you can see in verse 7, is that the Most High formed the light and He creates darkness. But I know a lot of the time people only want to associate darkness with evil because the, the scriptures say that in the Most High He's light and in, in Him is no darkness at all. But that's symbolically. You actually see that darkness is very special to Jah, and I want to read a few verses about that. It's good to know that darkness is Jah's secret place. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 1, it reads, Then said Solomon, Jah had said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. So again, we can see here that Jah is saying he's, he's dwelling in thick darkness. And this darkness, when we look at this word, koshek, Strong's H2822, it's very simple. It's darkness, obscurity, but notice it's also a secret place. That's right, it's a secret place. And there's a scripture that can verify the secretness of Jah. Psalms 18, it reads, 
he bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly, yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the sky. So just like in the beginning of time, it's the darkness that was there preeminent surrounding Jah. And he brought forth his light from that darkness. This is a really good understanding to know so that you can see that the preeminence of time deals with coming into the evening, the night first, then into light. Let's continue. We read Genesis 1 1, and we'll read it again. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Jah moved upon the face of the waters. So we see here in the beginning of this verse 2 here that the earth has no form. The Most High is not working on the earth right now. It's like clay, sand, particles submerged in the water, the dark waters. And it says that darkness was above the waters, the face of the deep. And what was above those waters as well? Heaven. This is where Jah is. This is where his spirit is moving. So when it says his spirit is moving here, he's creating. And again, he didn't work on the heaven on, on the earth at this time. He's only working on, on heaven, but he made the earth material. So whether you believe in the globe understanding of the earth or the popular notion of, of the flat earth as it's given with Antarctica being the borders of, of the earth or the square stationary earth or even a fixed globe geocentric earth, or how it might be presented in scriptures with the dome and the firmament. I just want to know that, let you know that at this time in Genesis chapter 1, there was no formation of any earth at all. It wasn't form, it wasn't shaped, it wasn't chaotic. It was this basically submerged um, material in the waters, like I said. It's not until day three that the Most High forms the earth with the waters and the seas. And that's something that has to be understood because I know a lot of people teach um, a certain different understanding of Genesis chapter 1. So again, we see the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the surface of the deep. So we have the surface, which is above the waters. Then we have the deep darkness of waters and we have this unformed earth material that's scattered throughout and submerged in the dark waters, having no shape. So above, obviously, is where Jah's heaven is. And remember, his throne is in heaven. Now quickly, I just want to say, a lot of people teach this gap theory, right? It, it's called a gap theory because they believe that between Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, and verses 2, that there was a gap of billions or millions of years. And that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, when it says, the Most High made the heaven and the earth, that it was a formed earth, it was a universe, it was, a, you know, sun, moon, and stars, everything was going on, and that it was populated by maybe even pre-human, um, even angels and the devil, you know, and his angels were all down there and they destroyed it, caused chaos, and, and they ruined it. And then in Genesis 1 verse 2, the Most High was, um, after that, he was kind of like going to be remaking the earth again to make it, you know, renew it or recreate it. But that's not true at all. It's one simple story going right through. And I'll talk about the gap theory another time in another lesson. Now here's something else I've heard a lot. A lot of people say that when the Most High said, let there be light, that that's when he began creating. I have to say, this is a foundational, foundational error. You should get a good understanding already that the Most High was creating right from the get-go. When he spoke light into existence, that's not the beginning of creation. He was working, he was moving. Like, if we even go back looking at this verse again, it says, And the Spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And we look at, you know, this definition of this word move, it means to grow soft or relax, to hover. And we know that the Most High wasn't relaxing at all. He's not, that's not what he does, right? He was above moving, creating, doing his work, preparing his heavenly throne for his angels and all the other spirit beings that exist with him. 
Again, this is very important. Jah was working and creating in the darkness before he said, let there be light. And I'll even say it this way, it was 12 hours of working in the darkness, creating heaven before the Most High said, let there be light to illuminate his heavenly throne. And remember this, Psalms 121 reads, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from Jah, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. I just brought this verse out to say, you know, the Most High doesn't need to rest. Even though he rested on the seven day Sabbath to, to bless it and, and to hallow it, he wasn't tired. A lot of people might bring up the fact that you can only work in the daytime, so in the nighttime is when people sleep and rest anyways. But the Most High, He doesn't need to rest. And He was working very clearly. And I'll show you another verse to let you know that He was working in the darkness. John made His heaven in darkness. The darkness and waters are preeminent before light. John's earth material, His physical matter, was made in darkness. Let's get a read. 2nd Ezra, verse chapter 6, verse 38. This is from the Apocrypha, which can be found in the 1611. However, it is in the original 1611 King James, and this is a good support um, for this understanding. Verse 38. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and said thus, Let heaven and earth be made. And thy word was a perfect work. And then was the spirit and darkness and silence were on every side. The sound of man's voice was not yet formed. So as we look at this verse here, it's telling us a couple of things. In the beginning again, we can see that the Most High Spirit was above the waters and darkness was there and silence as well. You'll notice that in the Big Bang Theory, it's a loud explosion. Where on the scriptural side, it's a quiet stillness, a silence that started creation. It's always the opposite when it comes to the adversary's false doctrines. But let's continue. Then commandest thou a fair light to come forth of thy treasures, that thy work might appear. So again, we know that the Most High says, let there be light, it comes from darkness. But it, notice it says here at the very end of the verse, that his work might appear. That's right, he was working in the darkness. He was making heaven. When he said, let there be light, he was showing his work to his creatures and illuminating his throne that way. And just think about it. It says again, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, Jah created the heaven and the earth. Right? So he's always creating right from the get-go. Again, don't let anybody tell you that he began creating at light. Now just look at Jah's pattern of, of his creation. We know that seeds grow in the dark underground before they come into the light of life. They grow in darkness first, establishing their roots and foundation for growth. They go deep down and every gardener, you know, and anybody who even grows any type of flowers knows that the roots go into the ground in darkness first and then eventually it sprouts up or springs up in, into the light. I mean, it's the same thing with us human beings. We come from the darkness of the watery womb into the light and spirit of life. There's water and darkness in the womb, just like it was in the beginning of creation. This is a deep understanding and the pattern of the Most High Jah. I mean, you could go to all living creatures. It's the same with them, whether they're inside coming from the shell of an egg or if it's of the womb of the creature, or the pouch, or deep within the sand, beneath the soil, inside trees, you'll see life initially begins its early growth in darkness, just like Jah's origination and creation of all things. And this is why he has to be glorified. Hallelujah. But as we move on, again covering the earth is without form, we see that we have a level surface, we have the deep dark waters as we said, and we have the unformed earth material scattered throughout and submerged in the dark waters. 
So the Most High was not worried about working on earth or shaping or forming it, but he made the material. We have water. After the first day of creation, we have energy with the light. We have his spirit, fire and water. We have everything that we need to build all the other elements of the universe. Let's continue. So again, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form, darkness on the face of the deep, the spirit of Jah moved upon the face of the waters. Again, I just want to kind of hit this home to let you know that the Most High is working. Jah was working in darkness. That's what he was doing. Remember what the scripture said, Then commandest thou fair light to come forth of thy treasure, that thy work might appear. I know I'm trying to hammer this home, but it's such an important foundation. So eventually, Jah said, let there be light. And the Most High made light. Let's give it a read. Verse 3. And Jah said, let there be light. And there was light. Very simple. Now, a lot of people might ask, well, what was this light? Was it the sun? No, this light was not the sun. And when we look up this word light in the Strong's Concordance, or, or, H216, we can see that, of course, it simply means light, the light of day, uh, of the heavenly luminaries, daybreak, dawn, the morning, um, light of life, light of prosperity in terms of uh, symbolically, light of instruction. And even it says the most high as Israel's light, right? All of these are definitions uh, of uh, an understanding of this word light. It has many different understandings. But again, in the beginning, it wasn't the sun that was given, that was created on day one. That was made on day four. Even though people try to say it was made in Genesis chapter one, verses one, we don't read of that at all. And we clearly see that the sun, moon, and stars were made on day four. So again, this is a good understanding to remember. The light came forth from the darkness. And this light came forth from Jah's great power. Remember, the Most High is a light. We do know that. And when we look into the Second Corinthians, we get a good understanding from verse, chapter 4, verse 6, about light coming from darkness. It reads, For Jah, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Jah in the face of Joshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach. So again, my focus here is that light came from darkness. So when I ask myself, what is that light? Well, we know the Father and the Messiah is the light of the Father. But when we look at Psalms 74, we see that the difference between the sun and the light. The day is thine, the night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. So again, we see that there's the light and the sun, a different light source from the sun. And as I said earlier, again, you know, the Most High, the Messiah, they are lights. They are one, but He is a light. We read in Revelation chapter 21, verse 23, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of Jah did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Revelation 22, 5 And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for Jah Almighty giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So again, getting a good understanding that when the Most High made light, that was just a continuation of his creation, illuminating the heavens so that his creatures and his angels can see his beautiful, awesome creation of heaven. And the earth, again, was still submerged in the waters. You know, just the phrase 24-7 should be something that could stick in our minds when it's talking about, you know, a 24-hour day and how we see days work. It should be a really common thing, but I just do know that Sometimes people think that there's new understandings, but then they end up corrupting something that wasn't even broken in the first place. Let's get a little bit of a look at the rest of the verses of Genesis chapter 1 um, through 5. So we read 1 and 2 already. 
Let's take it from verse 4. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good, and Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And Jah called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So we've just given a good read, and this is the first day. But now just look at certain words here. I'm just going to call them up as we go down. These are words that deal with time. Beginning, darkness, light, day, night, and of course, the other day, and evening and morning. These are all important words that deal with time and the 24-hour day. And I've heard a lot of people try to speak around it and try to twist it up, but it's very simple, and I just want to just demonstrate it very clearly. So we have these seven words regarding time that are used on the first day of origination. It said beginning, we, we had beginning there. Then on one side we have darkness, night, and evening. Then we also have light, day, and morning. And both of these together make your genuine 24-hour day. These are the words that you see clearly in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And so to me, you'd have to overlook these things to say, hey, this day is only dealing with a light, a light period. We've shown very clearly that Jah was working in darkness. And I could say clearly, again, it was 12 hours of working in darkness, and then there was going to be 12 hours of light. And let's look at the pattern here um, on, the, on the left, darkness, night, and evening. And I want you to take a look at this verse here in Proverbs chapter 7. Verse 9, it reads, In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. So again, we see this, the side of the darkness side um, of creation. All the words are there again. We have evening, we have black for blackness, we have darkness, we have night. Everything is there, right? And so to me, it's very clear that a night is a part of the 24-hour day. And you can't just count the daylight part. And I'll focus on the Sabbath issue again in another lesson. But just remember, whether it's in the daylight season or in the night season, both of these seasons of time are seasons of time and they are united cycles of time and are measured equally. This is what I would call united duality. Let's take a look at the Most High's uh, scripture here in Jeremiah chapter 33. It reads, Thus saith Jah, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should be not be day and night in their season. And he goes on to say something else. But we see here that there's a covenant of the day and night. They work together. Although they're separated and divided, they, uh, they have a, a united duality. You can't have day without the night in situation here of creation that we live in. But we also see that it has their season. And that's very important. Now I want to say this. In the future when the Most High does come and sets up His holy city, there will be no, will be no night there in the city. The Most High, as we read, will be the light for us that way. And no need for the sun, moon, or stars at all. But we're talking about this creation and where we're in now. Let's continue. So it's good to know that light, you know, came from darkness. And we have that, remember, we had the darkness, we had the night, we had the evening. And then the most said, high said, let there be light, which brought forth, you would call the daylight or the morning. And then he separates and divides the light from, you know, from the, from the darkness. And we see that is the evening and the morning are the first day. So this is something I just want you to get this good understanding of how the time frames work. Also, to get a good understanding of Jah's pattern from creation. And it's this. The heavenly was first, then the earthly. Darkness was first, then light. Night is first, then daylight. And the evening was first, then the morning. This is a pattern, and there's many other patterns that Jah has established on this first day of creation. And as we should know, every day after day one is exactly the same. But again, some people might argue about the, sab the seventh day Sabbath. When we look at other, you know, examples of Jah's beauty of united duality, we can see it in Genesis chapter 8. And this is beautiful. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, 
and day and night shall not cease. So when we look at this, we see that there's two different things here. Like summer and winter, they're opposites, but together they make a year. Seed time and harvest are opposites as well. One is for planting and one is for you know, um, reaping, but together they make an agricultural year. And same thing with cold and heat. They work together, and of course at the bottom we see day and night. And don't worry if day come, the words day come before night or night before day. When you read the scriptures, they get used all the time in, in, in any which way, whether you say day or night or you say night and day. It doesn't matter. It just basically is meaning all the time. And this again is an example of Jah's united duality. As we go through a couple of these words again that were found uh, dealing with darkness, evening, and night, I just wanted to go over them. And we already covered darkness already, Koshek. And then we have, and the darkness he called night, which is Layil. Again, this simply means night as opposed to day. Now again, when we're talking about the day in context, it's daylight. But night and day, night and daylight together make a 24-hour day. I know it sounds confusing, but really in context, it's very, very simple. Even if we look at the word evening, which tends to be the one, one of the more challenging words that people have with when it comes to this topic of when a day ends and begins. But we can see here, by definition, it means evening, night, or sunset. And the root word is arab, which means to, to grow dark, to become evening. So again, it's very clear that this word is associated with darkness. However, though, you'll find that a lot of people try to make it be associated with light. And even when you look in the dictionary, English dictionary for the meaning, it says for evening, the latter part of the day and early part of the night, the period from sunset to bedtime. Now, number three, this is how people might use it sometimes and get confused. It says the time between noon and sunset, including the afternoon and twilight, any concluding or declining period, and evening's reception or entertainment. So I know that at times people might say it's evening, like around 4 or 5 o'clock, as the sun is setting that way. And when the sun starts going down, people tend to call that evening. But it's dealing with the sun setting and darkness starting to come. It's not like the, um, the evening starts from midday, 12, 12 in the day. And some again, some people teach that you know the evening is from 2 o'clock to the latter part of the day for 4 hours. But it's really near the, it should be scripturally understood as near the ending of the day. Again, we look at John chapter 11. It says, Joshua answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? And I know when people speak about this topic, that's their main focus, even though he speaks about the night after. But I mean, if there's 12 hours in the day, then we know that there's 12 hours in, in the night. And that's why our clocks only need 12 hours, because they can cover both periods. But what you see in front of you is Jazz Clock, and it's very unique. It's not like the world's clock where they flip the numbers upside down and they put 12 at the top, you know, 6 at the bottom. When you start to understand time and how days begin and end in the evening at 6 p.m. or 6 a.m. or sunset, you start to get a good understanding. However, I don't want to focus on that now, and let's continue to move on. Again, people saying that the evening is part of like from high noon is the evening. No, it's supposed to be way later. And the evening, again, when you read the scripture, is associated with darkness and nighttime. But some people teach that it's the light portion of the day and it's divided into morning and evening. And they'll say, yeah, this is your evening and your morning the first day. But again, it makes no sense. Look at Zechariah or Zechariah chapter 14. It reads, Behold, the day of Jah cometh and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to Jah, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. So what this verse here, verse 7, clearly stands out to me and says, The evening time it's usually dark. But this unique day of the Most High, it's, it, he's saying that at the evening time when it should be dark, it's going to be light. So again, by deduction, it lets us know that the, the evening part is dealing with nighttime. Not like how it is here and people keep the 
12 hour Sabbath or even the Sabbath that begins from the morning first and then the evening, that doesn't work that way. This is all false. And again, the evening is not a time of light. Now, when we look at this, what we just covered here, basically, we have the evening and a dark beginning. We have the 24 hour day starts with the 12 hour dark cycle. Jah is originating or creating his heavenly domain in the darkness. The unformed earth material is submerged in the dark waters, getting prepared to be shaped and formed on day three. His spirit moves upon the dark waters of the deep. Then Jah says, let there be light, ending the first 12 hour darkness cycle or night cycle. Again, if there are going to be 12 hours in a day, we should know that. That means there's going to be 12 hours in the night. 12 plus 12 simply gives us 24. So I don't know what the big fuss is because people want to see the words 24 hours in the scripture when you can kind of get a good sense of it very easily. Again, the evening and the morning with the first day. You begin the evening time at the bottom. We have our 12 hours of night and darkness. Just says, let there be light. Then we have our 12 hours from beginning from the morning of the daytime and the light. Again, being one cycle, going into day two, day three, day four, five, six, and seven, all being the same day. So remember, I wanted to show you these various charts. The evening was first and the morning is second. We got our 12 plus 12 giving us 24 hour day. We have our darkness and our night and our evening. We have our light, our day, and our morning giving us the 24 hour original day. Now, even though the number 24 is not spoken of regarding a day, it's very apparent. I mean, 12 is a, a very important number to the Most High, dealing with tribes and the apostles and 12 months of the year, the 12 gates of heavenly Jerusalem, and again, the 12 hours you know, in the day, daylight part. But 12 plus 12, again, is 24. And I see that you know even 24 bullocks were used when it was a dedication of the Most High's altar. Number 7, verse 88, it reads, And all the oxen for the sacrifice of the peace offerings were twenty and four bullocks, the ram sixty, the he goat sixty, the lambs of the first year sixty. This was the dedication of the altar after that it was anointed. Then we also read in Revelation that there's twenty-four elders that sit in just presence around his throne. Revelation 11. And the four and twenty elders which sat before Jah on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped Jah. So I'm just bringing this out to say, hey, you know, the number 24, it's not something that, you know, we have to see it in terms of time, but you can see it has a great spiritual significance that way. And it's actually they're sitting around his throne. So again, the evening first and the morning were the first day. And when we read Genesis 1, it tells us that darkness was present first and that Jah originated light on the first day. And so the repeated phrase of evening and morning six times wisely shows that there were alternating periods of darkness and light throughout the origination or creation weekly cycle. It wasn't just light only. When we look at just seven day creation week, we can see here night then light or evening then morning going through all the days of the weekly cycle. The scripture reads, And Jah saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now the reason why I'm bringing this out is because a lot of people teach, you know, darkness and the gap theory saying that the devil was evil and all of that. Right here we read that everything was very good. So for the first creation week, I don't care how long you think it is, even if you, you know, mistakenly believe that each day is for a thousand years of creation, that's not true. That's dealing with our existence. However, everything was good. The angels were good. There was no evil, no sin at all. It says very good for those six days. And then the seventh kind of caps it off as being holy. So the darkness was first and was also very good. And we finish it off. And on the seventh day, Jah ended his work which he had made and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So again, we see clearly night and day, night and day, giving us the, the genuine day as well as the genuine week. 
So we read from the beginning, evening first again, then the morning second, not vice versa, the morning first and then the evening. You don't read that. And this point is crucial because if we go wrong on this foundation, we're going to have two different understandings forever. And for the most part, if you build on this foundation the wrong way, this one day get it wrong, you're going to have a faulty foundation. So it's important to get this right, especially when we're talking about uh, time frames and chronological uh, sequences of the Most High's calendar. Now, if indeed the morning was the first part, and the evening was the second part, like some people claim, of the 12-hour light season, or if morning was the first 12 hours and evening was the second 12 hours, why didn't the scriptures just plainly say the morning and the evening were the first day? But it doesn't say that. But simply put, six times over we read, the evening and the morning were the first day, second, third, fourth, fifth, right? All the way to number seven. So when it comes down to it, you know, People are going to have to choose whether you see the weekly cycle or the 24-hour day cycle um, this way as darkness first or as you can see on the bottom with light or if you even keep a 12-hour Sabbath of which I'll focus on again later. But this 24-hour day showing of day one of creation should be very clear that all of the Most High's days are 24 hours, including His Sabbath day especially and His feast days that we'll speak about in another video. So I just want you to go away with this pattern here and understand this, this orderly pattern of Jah's dualities. The heavenly or the spiritual was first, then the earthly or the physical. Darkness was first, then comes light. The evening came first, then the morning. Masculine first, then comes the feminine. Adam came before Eve. The first empires were Negro or Black or Sheep empires. And now in the end times, it's the Gentile or Goat empires. So what I'm saying is that all the empires prior to Alexander the, the Great were basically Black empires controlled by Black kings and so on and so forth. When Alexander the Great came on the scene or Alexander the Goat came on the scene, that's when you basically see like the Europeans come in, the straight hair, the Gentiles taking over. You also see in the scriptures of this pattern that salvation came through the black family of nations first. So as we know, Israel is a black nation. And when Israel was on the scene as a nation, they were speaking generally, or not, they were not speaking, they were living amongst other black nations as well. Egypt, Philistia, you know, Assyria, so on and so forth. And then after that, we know that the gospel, our salvation comes to the Gentile families through our black savior, Joshua, Jesus the Christ. And now the Gentiles can come in to salvation as well on a big bulk. Although they were always allowed in, but now uh, there's a big light for them to come in. So this is a great deep understanding. I know, and I, even though I'm talking about the first day of creation, but I want you to feel the pattern and how things go. So I'm going to finish off here again, reminding you the evening was first. The 24 hour day starts with the 12 hour cycle. The unformed earth material was submerged in the dark waters. Jah was working and creating on his heavenly empire, his domain, where his throne is for the angels. His spirit was up there above the waters doing all these things, being actively created. Then Jah said, let there be light, ending the first 12 hour darkness cycle. Then morning begins, and the 12 hour night ends, and the 12 hour daylight cycle starts. The heaven and universe is illuminated above the waters. All the angels are originated, they come alive, and they begin to inhabit heaven with the Most High. As you know, the angels are spirits of fire. So when Jah said, let there be light, that was the first source of energy that was there to give the angels as well life. And that's why they are called angels of light as well. Then the 24 hour day ends with, with the light finishing off and the evening coming back on. So we have our 12 hour day and our a 12 hour 12 hour night I should say and our 12 hour day giving us a 24 hour day the evening and darkness first the morning and light second and that's day one of creation again I want to give thanks to the Most High Jah for David and all of his studies that I've been putting forth and I will be sharing forth with the Most High's will contact me anytime you want be sure to subscribe to this channel if you like this video, share it with others. And if you hit me up on the email, I can give you a link to next year's calendar, or sorry, to this year's calendar and 
get you prepared to receive next year's calendar as well as receiving a copy of the Revelation of Jazz Almanac in a PDF format. So thanks for watching. That was the Revelation of Jazz Scriptural Calendar Part 1. The original day found in Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 5. The blackness of darkness, the evening and the morning were the first day. Stay tuned for some more videos about Jazz Holy Cycles of Time. Shalom.